Okay, so let's go over the multiple choice for the exam for spring 10 of the old exams I put for practice for exam 1. In order to answer the first one, you have to remember that you can never make any assumptions other than that the consumer meets the requirements of the theory of the consumer. That's the only assumption you can make. So for this one, what we're saying is you cannot make any of the assumptions and the curve, the indifference curve, is always going to be like this. It's going to be downward sloping with a little curve. Uh, so if that's the case, and the only thing we know for sure between a consum consumer consuming chocolate and milk is that this, the MRI is going to be negative. The slope is going to be negative. It's not positive because they're not perfect substitutes. It's no one. The only way it could be one if it's a perfect substitutes. It's not constant because, again, it's not perfect substitutes. Some people could assume that that the relationship between chocolate and milk is a complementary relationship, meaning that they're perfect complements. If that was the case, this will be uh, an L-shaped indifference curve. But again, you cannot assume that unless the question actually tells you to. So the only thing we know about this is that it is uh, negative. That's what the answer is, uh, C. The second one is also another version of the problem we've seen before. So um, let me kind of start from scratch here. Answer the question already, but I answer it again. So uh, remember that what, what we're going to do for this is to use the the theory of the um, the maximizing equation, which is equal to which said that the, when the person is maximizing consumption, the ratio of their marginal utilities is the same as the ratio of the prices. I decided to put um, C on the horizontal axis and W on the vertical axis, so that means that the ratio of the marginal utilities is going to be MUC over MUW. And using the numbers given in the problem, MUC is actually 10, and MUW is 2, so the, the ratio of the marginal utilities is actually um, uh, five, uh, 5. Now, the ratio of the prices in this particular case is going to be PC over PW, and that's going to be equal to uh, well, the price of um, cheese is 20, the price of wine is 10, so this is going to be equal to minus 2. So clearly, the person is not maximizing utility. So if he's not maximizing utility, it's not here where the person should be if he's maximizing utility. Then it has to be either here or here. There's only two, two choices, right? So we just, you just need to find out if what is the situation. And on this one right here, the slope of the indifference curve is flatter than the slope of the weighted line. But that's not the case. Well, the case is a, it's a situation like this one, where the slope of the um, indifference curve, minus 5, is actually steeper than the slope of the budget line, which is two. So if this person is here, and the person has to come down here, you can only do it by reducing the consumption of wine and increases the consumption of cheese, which is what, what the answer is B. I make a note that I think when I posted this exam for the first time, I think I had uh, the answer is C, but the answer is uh, this question is actually B. Now there's another way of answering this question is, um, Remember that the prices are fixed. You cannot really change the prices. The only thing that the person can do is to change the consumption. And when the consumption is changed, the marginal utilities are changed. And if you want to change this minus 5 to bring it to minus 2, the only way you can do that is by decreasing the marginal utility of cheese. And the only way you can decrease the marginal utility of the cheese is by consuming more cheese. Right? So that's another way of, of answering this question. Okay, question three is um, a little more straightforward. It's basically tell you when is the budget line going to have a slope of one? Well, the other thing you have to remember here is that um, the budget line is going to be equal to the ratio of the prices. I'm not sure why this is moving this way, but let's just write it here since this is kind of temperamental right now. It's going to be equal to Px over Py. That's the, that is the, hold oh, this, maybe put a, put a red color here. That is the slope of the indifferent of the budget line. And the only time this is the same is when the prices are the same. All right. So when the prices are the same, the slope of the budget line is one. So that was a pretty straightforward question. Number four said an indifferent curve that is vertical in this that the consumer derives what? All right, so let's just draw it here. Uh, an indifference curve that is like this, it's vertical, like this, and this uh, red. So it's just like this, where the consumers, you can give the consumer 
as many units of the good and the y-axis as you want, but that person is not going to get any happiness from any more units of the good and the y-axis. It's not that the person hates the good, the good and the y-axis, it's just simply that the, per, the good and the y-axis doesn't give this person any more utility. So that's what we know. Uh, this is what we call a neutral. We did one of this example in class. Okay, number five says when the price of x decreases, the income effect is y. Okay, so the, what we need to remember here, and let me see if I can kind of draw over these lines here. It's going to be challenging, but let's see if we can do it. You need to remember is what is happening is that if the price is decreasing, that means that the, the initial point was along that line, and this person is going to move to, the budget line is going to chip outward to here. All right. So that's kind of what, what's going to happen here. So if that's the case, then you can remember that the way we calculate the the way we calculate the income and substitution effect is by bringing the consumer back to the initial point. All right. So, so if the consumer was originally on this line, and now the cons um, the consumer is going to be along this line, well, in order to uh, separate the income and substitution effect, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the consumer back. Uh, to the original utility curve, this one right here, by shifting this curve down until it's tangent to this point. So basically, we're going to bring the consumer down to this dotted line right here. So let me see if I can actually do this for you. Oh, that turned out wrong. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring the consumer down, 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 down until that line is just tangent. My computer is a bit slow, I think. That's why we cannot change it this way. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do consumer from here. We're gonna bring it down to the uh, its tangent back to the original utility curve, right? So this line right, so this line right here, this dotted line right here is the line that we're using here. So now we went. This was the consumption initially. This is the second consumption, and this is the consumption without the income effect. Okay. So the income effect. This is a substitution effect from here to here, and the income effect is the leftover. Right? It's still going to be from M, uh, the difference between M and M. It's a pretty good question. Remember, uh, you just try to answer the question if, if, the, if, in fact, this was a price increase. If this had been a price increase, then what would have been the answer? Right? I think a good, a good way of altering this question and putting it in the exam again is if this had been a price increase, then what would have been the answer? Try to answer that. That would be a good practice for you. Okay, we'll do the uh, essay questions in a different uh, video.